All right, everyone. Welcome to Max Southside for the first installment of Into the Lion's Den. That's, that's what I'm calling this little series that we're going to do. So we've, uh, I think most of us know each other, at least somewhat, at least from online. And one of the things that I've noticed, my name's Mark Melton, by the way, in case you don't know me. Uh, I'm a local attorney, political active guy, uh, social media troll, and uh, proprietor of this fine establishment. And uh, it's been a pleasure to get to know a lot of you, even though we've been largely on opposite sides of the political spectrum. The one thing, that's an understatement, right? I know. But, but the one thing that I've noticed that we do have in common is that all of us care about the city of Dallas and we all want what we think is the best for it. We have some different ideas about what that might be. And one of the complaints uh, that I've heard from you know, folks on, that, that may not be on the same side of the aisle as I am uh, is that the, the establishment lacks transparency. Uh, they go in dark rooms and make decisions and force them down on the rest of the public. Uh, and so part of the reason that we want to do this type of thing is to try and, and reverse that trend. So ideally, what we'd like to do is get people from around the city to come in here and have discussions like this, where you get an opportunity to hear the information straight from the horse's mouth, uh, you get an opportunity to provide comment, ask questions, um, influence them, hopefully they influence you too, and it goes both ways. Uh, but the whole idea here is to get a little bit more of a community conversation going so that we can perhaps stop you know, lobbing bombs over the fences at each other uh, just because we're on other sides and maybe have some productive conversations about how we move the city forward. So tonight, our uh, special guest is Bobby Abtahi. Full disclosure, he's a friend of mine, so... Don't hold that against don't, don't hold that against him, that is true. Uh, but he is currently the president of the Parks Board for Dallas. Uh, he was uh, on the planning commission for a while. He's done all kinds of other things in the city. He's been a, a, a rabid volunteer for civic stuff. Uh, and most people like me, you love him or you hate him. Uh, but hopefully, conversations like this, we can we can at least put a little bit more love and respect, even if we still disagree at the end of the day. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bobby. I, we have no prepared remarks, uh, so he can say whatever he wants to say. And you guys feel free to ask whatever questions you want to ask. Uh, Bobby, if they could yell out from the crowd, if we could repeat the question uh, so that it gets recorded, then we can go from there. So with that, here's Bobby and Tommy. Uh, thank you. First thing I'm going to do is switch out this chair because I will fall over. This he thing. doesn't want the top chair. Yeah, be careful. Um, <laughs> and I feel like I need a guitar and a harmonica. <laughs> um, I really, uh, I didn't really have any planned remarks. I can do this however you guys want. I don't want to spend a lot of time just standing up here and talking to you. Uh, I'd rather we have a discussion. Um, I agreed to do this, I think, at midnight on Saturday over text with Mark. So uh, I didn't uh, do much planning, but uh, just a little bit of background on myself, just so you know where I'm coming from and why I uh, have a certain viewpoint or why I think something or another. I think it helps to know people's background. Um, born and raised in Dallas, uh, went to uh, UT for undergrad, came back, went to SMU Law, I uh, was a tax lawyer for a little, I actually went to law school with Buddy Apple and Mark Melton. Um, that's how we kind of know each other. Um, and uh, spent some time as a tax lawyer, wasn't the most exciting thing in the world, so I uh, left and went to be a community prosecutor in South Oak Cliff, uh, at South Central Patrol on Camp Wisdom in Lancaster, did that for about three years, uh, started my own practice, I've served on the City Planning Commission like Mark said. Uh, now I serve as the president of the park board and I see two park board members here. I see Jesse Moreno who just walked in and Becky Rader. So give them a round of applause because they've been at it uh, longer than I have and it is uh, fun work but it's still work and the pay is not too great. Uh, but so I'll, I'll really just, I'll talk about anything you guys want to talk about. The main thing, the reason I agreed to this is we have a bond package coming up uh, in November. I think it's one of the most important things that the city will vote on in a long time. Sam Merton, who served on the Citizens Bond Task Force is here, and he can tell you that a lot of time and effort went into this thing. And in my opinion, <laughs> Dallas for a long time is always doing things uh, for people to come here. Like we're gonna attract conventions and we're gonna do this to get visitors. And, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that to get people here. And 
my opinion is that it's time to start taking the people who taking care of the people who are already here and we're already here why are we trying to plan for people on the chance that they'll come here and i think this bond package is the first step in that it's going to take care of our streets it's going to take care of our parks it's going to take care of some city facilities uh, it's going to take care of our police uh, and securing their buildings. So it's it's really for the citizens of Dallas. So that I would like to focus on that, but I'll do whatever you guys want. You're the audience. You're in charge. So you tell me. You want Q and A? You want? Hey, tell me. You want whatever you want. I know Larry's got a whole list of questions he scrawled out, and he's he's already apologized for them, so they must not be nice. Um, so if you want, I'll go with one of those first, just so we can figure it out. Shoot, Larry, what's your question? Uh, you. Go with your meanest first. Seven, yeah. Seven, Let's hear it. What Rock Lake, the park. Oh, I got Becky here, I'm good. The Arboretum. Okay, Becky's still here. We got contractors who just go through and mow down stuff with no supervision. Now, sure, contractors, do they get paid just by showing up? They're hungry, well, let's go blast a bunch of stuff so we can turn in an invoice, and yet they, well, they killed a bunch of wildflowers and whatever. Where's the comeback? What? Why are they so unsupervised and, and the tail's wagging the dog? So I will make this very easy for you, and I will say I don't know. Um, <laughs> Becky, so as my role as Park Board President, I run the meetings. Uh, I represent District 15, which is the mayor's district, and it basically means the whole city. But I don't, I try not to step into other people's business, to be honest with you. And everything you just mentioned is Becky's. She's our park board liaison to the Arboretum. She's a District 9 representative. And she's doing a great job. So I would just, rather than say something that's wrong, I'll just let you talk to her after this. See her? Okay. Are you good with that? I don't know. Well, well, grab, you right. grab the mic and tell yeah. me. Why, why do they get away with that? <laughs> 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 so are you good with that? <laughs> Am I good with that? So no, I will just sit here and, and answer you. So Arboretum has nothing to do with the wildflowers around the lake. The mowing is done now based on um, the determination to provide for prairie restoration. And they were rated one, two, three, and it was a big, long process. And I will be happy to share that information information with you later on because it's long. So they're don't roll your lies at her. Times. They're not being mowed. She by does a lot of hard work, man. They're being mowed by the city staff. All the prairies. The city staff. The city staff. Yeah, and they have certain times that they're told to mow those areas because there are different types of restoration going on. Okay, uh, what, what, what's the ratio in the different parks, green spaces, whatever? City staff doing the maintenance versus contract? It's different in every park because some parks you will have staff that are doing like the prairie remnants and then they're just doing regular mowing like in the uh, athletic fields, those are the contractors. No, it's different every part. No, I'm, I'm in 10. So wait, wait, wait. I gave you one question. So You're only like five now. Am I gone so Flagpole Hill. <laughs> <laughs> We're off on the tangent. Flagpole Hill. I'll tell you what. Different, if you want to come to person. the next park board meeting on September 7th, stop by and I'll make yeah. sure you get answers to all your questions. <laughs> Anyone else have a question? Go for it. If no one's going to ask something, I'm just going to sit up here and talk. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> Given that the most important determination that will be made about our parks in the near term is what we're going to do with Fair Park. Okay. And given your involvement with a group that I think we can safely say advocated for the idea of turning Fair Park over to Walt Uh Sell me on the wait, idea wait, 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 wait. that me... you're the guy. Because, I mean, I like you. I, I think you're a good guy. I think you'll do a good job. But sell me on the idea that we're going to get a, an impartial hearing on how best to serve our city with Fair Park. Great question. And, and not just our city, 
but the neighborhood around Fair Park and how it will impact the, that group of people? Absolutely, great question. Let me first correct two assumptions that you made in your questions. Um, one, I never advocated for giving the park to a person. Uh, Walt Human was in charge of an organization that was in the process of getting a management agreement for the park. I'm gonna try, I'm, I'm not gonna say anything about the three bidders because I don't know what the park board's role will be in that and it's in a competitive bid process, but I will tell you about my involvement prior to becoming uh, president of the park board because I think it's important and it's, it's a valid question. So uh, I've done some things around town and one of them is being the chair of Friends of Fair Park. I was the chairman of the board for uh, about six months. Uh, when the process from the mayor's task force came in, at that time, there was talk of privatization and the Friends of Fair Park board voted to support that plan. Uh, as the chair of Friends of Fair Park, I served on an advisory council, not a voting member, not a director, anything like that. Um, just like the chair of the Texas Discovery Gardens board, um, the um, Children's Aquarium, so all the, they call them resident institutions, which is a really complicated and city hall way of saying Fair Park tenants. Uh, so all those board members served on an advisory council. Um, I pro I'm the board, the park board's not going to get to decide who wins this contract. It's going to be done through purchasing, and it's going to go to the city council. I could honestly care less who wins. I care about the plan to make Fair Park the best it can be. And to answer your question regarding the surrounding community, uh, I agree with you. It's important. Uh, Lucky for me, Diane Gibson just walked in. She's sitting right behind you. And for those of you who don't know Diane, she runs the community courts in Dallas. They're award-winning courts. They've been uh, given many uh, awards from the Department of Justice and what they do. And when I went to work for City Hall, I went to work for Diane for a bit at the Martin Luther King Community Court. And so I'm very well, I'm well aware of the issues around South Dallas. It's near and dear to my heart because I think that Whatever happens at Fair Park has to be a catalyst for that community, whether it's jobs, whether it's um, activities. It's, you, can't, you can't ignore one or the other. I mean, that's not something that I support. Um, I think that when we, come, when we look at these things as a city, whether it's Trinity Groves, Fair Park, all these places, um, there's this, the, we're always given two pretty bad options, like either raise the tax base and gentrify the area and everyone has to leave, or just let it sit and don't do anything and everyone has to suffer through what they've suffered for the last 10 years. I think there are tools we can use in the middle, um, boring tools called neighborhood stabilization overlays, which is a zoning tool. Uh, we could talk to the folks at the appraisal district about normalizing and stabilizing tax values for people who want to stay there. Um, but we're not going to be able to do any of that if one side is screaming, you're all crooks, and the other side are saying, you're all crazy. So it, it all these things we're going to talk about, and you're right, Fair Park's one of the big decisions, maybe not the biggest, but it's one of them. If we don't kind of come and figure out how to solve complicated problems, then we're never going to, I mean, we're, it's going to just sit there. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Um, anyone else? If you can't definitively say that that's the most important decision to be made in the near future, what would you think is more important than Fair Park right now? The bond. Uh, I think that the Parks Department, well, I don't think, I know the Parks Department hasn't had a bond election since 2006. Um, our neighborhood parks are falling apart. Uh, we've had tremendous real estate development, but with that, we haven't had land acquisition for future parks. So most people wouldn't know this, but North Dallas is a park desert because when folks took all that prairie land and developed it back then, no one really had the idea that, well, where are we gonna do for green space? Um, we're sitting in what could be another park desert, the Cedars, because there's all kinds of development happening around here, but if we don't get this bond passed, then there's not gonna be money to acquire land to make parks for this, for this area. Uptown's another great example. If you look at the development that's occurred in Uptown, no one put a plan in place for green space, and now the land is too expensive to buy. So you have all this multi, uh, what do you call it, uh, multifamily development, and you have all this high density, and the only green space you have there is Griggs Park, which is kind of on the outskirt, and it's too expensive to buy now. Part of the issue with this downtown parks initiative is that no one thought about green space. We were developing downtown, so now it's 10 times as expensive to develop a park there. So I think if you look at the city 30 years from now, uh, how we plan for that and how we move forward with that is 
one of the most important things. If we're getting more dense, we're going to get more dense. And if you don't provide for green space in the in, when we get more dense, then you're going to have just a concrete jungle that we kind of already have in other parts of town. Um, in regards to the bond with Fair Park, yeah. Um, why why has there not been any discussion of contingency on one of the bids uh, to match? It seems a little crazy to ask the the taxpayers to put fifty million dollars into addressing essentially 20% of the deferred maintenance that's been identified um, when we're months away from finding a new management agreement and there's n nothing in the agreement for them to match the tax dollars that are going into it. Uh, that's a good question. So uh, I've heard that a lot. The bond money will not be handed over to any private group. The park board will control that money. Um, they won't be able to decide how it's spent. There's a draft of very specific needs that most of them are health and safety uh, that need to be done. The needs inventory, like you said, is massive. So it's, it's still a drop in the bucket, but it, it won't be handed over to any private entity. The park board's gonna decide how to spend that. And so another thing, another side to that coin is if we don't say that we wanna fix up Fair Park and get it going again, then why should we expect someone else to? Um, Becky why did it get to where it is without y'all taking care of it in the first place? It's our fault. <laughs> Plain and simple. It's our fault. Um, we ignored it. And I'll but be the first So step. how can we be confident that you'll do anything different with the $50 million? I'm telling you, there's a list. So you can, there's a list of exactly where it will go. Um, like 13 million is going to the Hall of State. They have flooding issues. They have exterior issues with the stone. Um, nothing in there is a shiny object. It's literally meat and potatoes, roofs, and and the reason I think it's important is one one thing that I've tried to do in the last few months is get a tenant in the women's building, and it's hard. I mean, no one wants to come out there when things are falling apart, when the infrastructure is falling apart. That whole park has one electrician, and he has to pump water out of the main electric room every time he wants to go in there. There's literally a puddle of water sitting there that he has to pump out so he, he can go in there. So it's it's a it's a huge task, and so I think the fifty million dollars is. I wish it was more, obviously, but that's what the council decided. So I would I would hope that you and everyone in here would support that. Um, it's it's really it's really necessary. Go ahead, CJ. Oh, thanks, Bobby. So um, first of all, that, you know, congratulations. You're coming up on ten years of holding your bar card, right? Yeah. November. Okay. Yeah. Okay. November. Yeah, I didn't expect that, but. Right, I mean, you know, so, but um, it's quite a trajectory that you've enjoyed in Dallas. Um, you, you've served on a number of um, nonprofit foundations as well as, you know, where you're at now. Um, help us understand, one, that path, and then two, um, how all that prior experience with Trinity Commons and whatever it's being called today, yeah. um, Friends of Fair Park, yeah. um, City Planning Commission, which um, I actually went back and looked. Dwayne Carraway nominated you for City Planning Commission. Yeah, in, uh, gosh, 2012, yeah. 2011? Absolutely, and yeah. I'm sure there's a story there. A and, great story. And then here, <laughs> your, your rise to the park board. So help us understand, because, I mean, to, to come out of law school and enjoy the, I mean, the shooting star effect that you have, help us understand that process. <laughs> Man, you're uh, you're being too nice. It's uh, not verbally. Yeah, I know. Um, so, I, I glossed over a part of that. Uh, I was a community prosecutor in South Oak Cliff. Uh, most of my target, does anyone, everyone know what a community prosecutor is? Yes, no? Well, I'll tell you anyways. Uh, community prosecutor is an assistant city attorney that is sent to a specific part of town and essentially told, make this area better using the law. Um, in my interview to uh, get the job, Adam Magoo uh, asked me the question, how often do you go south of I-30? And I said, once a year to go to the Texas OU game. And he said, well, this job is going to be stationed south of I-30. Are you okay with that? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine with that. I said, well, why didn't you go there before? I was like, well, why would I? And as some, I grew up in Dallas. I grew up in North Dallas. So I didn't realize it at the time, but it was a crazy, in my mind, why would I go down there? You know? And I think a lot of people had that mentality. So I went down there and I had an office at a police station on Camp Wisdom and Lancaster Road and my mind was blown. Uh, I was 27 at the time and literally had never been south of I-30 except to go to Texas OU. 
Um, I worked on a TABC protest, so there's all this talk about uh, bars in Uptown, so I can tell you now that the city does have a procedure in place to address this. Uh, two weeks onto the job, I worked on a TABC protest uh, for a nightclub that was opening across the street from Kip Academy. And uh, Councilman Carraway at the time had protested the application. I was assigned as the attorney on the case. The other attorney was Daryl Jordan, who I didn't know who that was. Uh, I searched him and was like, wow, what am I doing? Um, I had never taken a deposition, never tried a case. And we, uh, we had a basically a trial at the Dallas Public Library and uh, we won to deny the permit uh, in, that, in that case. And it was really important for that neighborhood and really important for the Lancaster corridor because it was gonna be a really bad operator and we had the data to back it up. Uh, after that, I found a program called Operation Crackdown that brought in the Texas National Guard to tear down uh, houses free of charge to the city. Uh, the city had a big problem with vacant houses at the time and didn't have the money to tear them down. So I found this program where the, the National Guard troops basically get training on big heavy equipment uh, to come tear down structures. Uh, the property owner, most of the time someone is deceased or someone doesn't have the money to tear it down, they're in a nursing home. And so it's basically attracting all kinds of nuisance, both criminal and uh, civil nuisance. So they're happy because they get their house torn down for free or this nuisance torn down for free. And the neighborhood's happy because there's all kinds of uh, crime associated. When, when one house in the neighborhood is vacant and all kinds of things are happening and it, it kind of has a domino effect. So I did all that and uh, the councilman uh, benefited, his district benefited. And so when I left City Hall, um, it was a tough decision, but at the end of the day, I had to pay my student loans and you can't do that on the city attorney's salary. So I left City Hall and he asked me to come back and serve on the planning commission. Did that answer it? That, that did touch on the, the planning commission piece, but let's talk about Trinity Commons and then later. Oh yeah, 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 Park. sorry. There's a lot of questions it's, there. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a story. And yeah. I think everyone would appreciate understanding. Uh, so Trinity Commons is not what you're thinking. You're thinking of the Trinity Trust well, that changes it's it. Now. I mean, it's no, 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 iteration no, it's important what I'm telling you. Okay. Uh, those are two different organizations. Uh, the Trinity Commons is still the Trinity Commons. The Trinity Trust has changed its name to the Trinity Park Conservancy, I believe. Um, so the Trinity Commons, what they do is they basically put on events in the Trinity. So uh, the Wind Festival, the Levee Run, um, all those free events that are in the Trinity, that's what Trinity Commons does. They market it as a destination. So Trinity Trust is kind of I would call them the heavy hitters. I wasn't on the heavy hitters side. Uh, Trinity Trust is where they raise the money and uh, it's a different organization. Actually, Tony was on the commons with me. I think, I don't know who else was. Um, but basically we marketed events to happen. The Wind Festival, the Levy Run are two of the main ones. Can you think of any others, Tony? Yeah, that's yeah those are the two biggest ones. Um, that's another board. I rolled off of that and Friends of Fair Park when I took the park board job. Friends of Fair Park, I went on there uh, because a buddy of mine who I went to high school with, Kurt Watkins, uh, some, some of you guys know Kurt, he was on that board and he knew I liked Fair Park, I liked going to Texas OU games, I worked in the Martin Luther King Community Court, uh, so he knew I liked, liked the area, I, I had an interest in it, so I went on there and um, at one point, I was on there about three, four years, and then the, the, the board uh, nominated and elected me chair of the board. I only did that for like four months because I didn't think it was appropriate to serve on those boards and be in the park board. So how does that benefit now, like with that experience oh, being in the park board? Which is ultimately what my question was, is all that body of experience has led you where you're at, and how does that help you with your decision making? I will be totally honest with you and tell you that I took the park board job because I have a 10 month old daughter. Um, I resigned from the plan commission last July because my wife was pregnant and moving back from New York and I wanted to focus more time with my family and the city plan commission is not a family friendly board. Uh, it's a lot of late night meetings. Park board is more uh, meetings at parks, uh, meetings at the zoo, ribbon cuttings and things like that. So uh, I, that's really why I took the position because it was something I could give back and the things I'm interested in and take my family along with me. But I think it gives me a good overall perspective city attorney's office i learned how city hall works the different departments planning commission i learned how planning works so when we're talking about trails and parks and how they interact 
I think it I think it helps. It's it's uh and and I to be honest with you, how I ended up there, sometimes I I don't know. It's just half of things that happen happen to you and half of them are luck, I guess. I appreciate your answers. I'm not gonna let you go again, Steve. You gotta let other people go. <laughs> yeah, yes sir. Actually going back to Fair Park, and this may be another question, but are all the buildings on the grounds grandfathered of the National Historic Register? Are they all landmarked? Uh, they're they're all landmarked and uh, so they're not grandfathered. Grandfathering. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, are all the buildings at Fair Park uh, grandfathered under the National Historic uh, Register and uh, landmarked? So again, much smarter people than me in the audience. And Buddy Apple's one of them. Buddy is the former president of Preservation Dallas, so he can tell you a more direct answer. But they're not grandfathered. Grandfathering is like a zoning term that would be like a non-conforming use. But they're all historic. Uh, except, well, we got a new one, but they're all under all kinds of regulations, right? Both through the Landmark Commission and the National Historic Registry. Okay. So they can't be demolished? Well, um, there's two schools of thoughts on that. Right now, they can't just be demolished, but there are people out there who think that we should get rid of some of them because they're dragged. And, and so there could there are processes in place to demolish buildings that are that have those restrictions on them. They're a bit onerous, but they're they're in place. Erica. Okay, I don't know how to ask this, but I have always been real interested in the state fair of Texas, and how do we do a contract with them every forty years? I mean, why can't we renegotiate a contract? And, and I know because you're in your position, uh, I see the city of Dallas somehow afraid of dealing my mind of dealing with the state fair of texas and it seems that there's not a whole lot of possible cooperation and uh, i'm real concerned about what they're doing and how it's not working with us so can you tell me why we can't create a better contract if it so, I think the current contract, and again, I, I told you guys before, Becky and Jesse have been doing this longer than me. I think it's 2028, right? Is it 2028? I think it's sooner. Yeah, it? I thought it was 2028. I think that's right, Bobby. Yeah, it doesn't really matter the date since they're in material breach of the contract. Why don't we just tell them to either shape up or ship out? Where, uh, where'd you get your law degree, Steve? You can make fun of my No, I'm messing with you, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm messing with you. State Fair of Texas is material breach of their contract. So there are people. The things they're supposed to do. They're, so they're, you're the guy in charge. Go to them and say, let's do this or let's do something different. So there, there is that, that point. So to Erica's point, there's, there's two things. There's a school of thought that they're in material breach of their contract. And then there's a school of thought that uh, why don't we renegotiate? Well, to renegotiate, you need two sides to renegotiate the contract. And they have said that they're not willing to open up the contract at this point. Material breach of a contract, I don't get to decide that. Um, that would be something that the city attorney's office or a judge would decide. Um, a good example of that is the Sam's Club case. Uh, that everyone wanted the plan commission to years ago. I don't know if you guys remember the Sam's Club East Village case, but everyone wanted the plan commission just yank away their zoning. But in reality, that wasn't a decision for the plan commission. We couldn't do it. There's certain certain laws and rules in place that force a judge or another body to decide. And in that case, I always thought they had a good case. I think I actually said it at the meeting, and so a judge decided that. So I can't. It's if I'm negotiating a. If I'm Mark's landlord and I say, hey, you're in breach, and he says, no, I'm not, I mean, I don't get to just say, yeah, you are, and that's the end of it. I mean, that, that involves some procedure and legal. Would you agree that they have breached the contract? Not, and that's the end of it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of it. It's not my place. Um, go ahead, Jackie. Yeah, so, so my concern with that is that we know what the, the auditor, what their conclusion was. Yeah. Um, and their conclusion was that basically there's been little to no oversight of the state fair of Texas weeks. And we also know that there, for some reason, was a misunderstanding on the definition of excess revenue. So was it, well, okay. So, right, and that was the kind well, of generalized conclusion. I think the issue was that when the contract was written and when the audit was done, there's a gap accounting principles, generally accepted accounting principles, and the definition, the gap definitions had changed. You're right. So, 
So the auditor had a problem with that. Those two conclusions of the audit were resolved by entering into an MOE, the Memorandum of Understanding. That's correct. Now that Memorandum of Understanding, as I get it, and maybe you can help me understand it better, uh, defines excess revenue. Yeah. And also gives total control of those funds to the state fair of Texas with input from the park director. Um, no, it's a dual fund. There's half of it goes to things that they want and half of it goes to things that the city wants. Okay, so their excess revenue can also go to things that they want. As long as it benefits the park, yeah. Despite? The, the director gets sign off on it. Okay, and will the park board ever get to sign off on that? Um, yeah, yearly. So when we discuss that item, I think lots of people said that when the when they do their yearly review, then they want the director to come in and say, what are you going to spend this money on? So we make sure we're on the same page. So following that, then, what happens to the funds from 2003 when the contract initiated to 2015? And during that time, there was no direct for the excess revenue, they should have gone to maintenance and operation. Part of the reason why the buildings are falling apart, right? Uh, I mean, I think it's easy to just blame. I think it's, I think I said it earlier, it's our fault. I mean, it's the city's fault. I mean, when times were tough, we cut and we cut from there. Um, people don't, a lot of people don't know this, but the park, the park department for the city of Dallas, we are our own real, like kind of offshoot. The city charter, when it was written in, I think, 1923, they, the, whoever was involved in that process decided parks were so important that we're going to make the park department report to a park board instead of the city council. And they will have full autonomy. And I, and I think the reason they did that is because parks are important to people, and people realize that when times get tough, the first thing to get cut are parks, libraries, rec centers. So, um, so I wouldn't say that it's all their fault. It's probably there's shared blame to go around. I don't. I don't know. Well, I mean, a, a big part of it is that parks department never had direct over or didn't perform their fiduciary duty. No, no, you complete oversight of the contract. Um, and the reason for that may be varied. We don't know, and, and I'm not going to get into that now. Yeah. But. My concern is what some people estimate that the number can be anywhere between 100 to 200 million dollars due to city. That's a big chunk of change that could do a lot to improve the situation at Fair Park. Absolutely. Why isn't State Fair of Texas being held accountable to that money? So I, I have seen and heard of the numbers you're talking about. I haven't seen it from the city auditor and I haven't seen it from you're nodding. So you have seen it from the city no, auditor? I haven't, but that gets me to another point. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the city auditor would have to determine that for us to go there. So why hasn't there been a call for a forensic audit of the State Fair of Texas? They do. Should you be leading that call, more importantly, since that money would directly benefit something that's under your area of responsibility, Fair Park? I mean, it seems to me like you're the guy that tomorrow morning I should see on TV while I have coffee going, where the hell is our money? What have you people done with our money? One. Answer up, where's our money? That's, gotcha. that should be you, right? So yearly, no, well, I think you have, you're giving me a little more credit than I deserve. Uh, I'm one of 15, and so whatever this, the park board you decides as a body. Back, he'll come on TV with you and ask well, where the money is. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me let me let me answer your question. Probably not Yolanda. Let me, wait, wait, wait. Let's let's not. Let's not, yeah. Let me answer your question. So yearly, the state fair, the, the state fair is audited every year. They're audited by Ernst and Young, and I I reviewed it for the time I've been on there. Um, I don't know what the answer to your question is about the total amount of funds. It sounds like a city auditor question. I would disagree that the park board has obfuscated any type of fiduciary duty. I think that uh, a big part of why I believe in moving Fair Park uh, into a private management agreement is that the city has kind of grown around itself and it's gotten big and it's gotten more complicated and there are times when 
other people could probably do things a little better than us. And that's not to say that we're giving anything away. Um, I think we should have oversight. I think we should have, we, and we will. We'll have a yearly, any, anything we do. The Dallas Zoo is a good example. Dallas Zoo has to come ask for their budget money every year. If they're not doing a good job, then we're able to cancel the contract. Um, there were some contracts made in the past that were probably not as uh, fair as I would have liked them to be. Um, and when those contracts are up, then I think there'll be a different discussion. But I, I mean, I've, I've heard, I know exactly what you're talking about. And for those who don't know, this has been an issue that's been ongoing. Um, it's not going to solve itself unless we start working together. And I think that MOU was a good step forward. Um, I don't totally agree with how things are done. Again, I've been in this position for three months, but my, my role, I feel, is more to facilitate positive outcomes, and hopefully we'll get there. Yes, sir? You've been in this position for three months, but you did state in the very beginning of this talk that you did vote for privatization of the fair park. As a Wait. member of the board of the Prince Park, or as advisory, or you were for it, but didn't vote for it. So the board voted for it. The board voted. Yeah, and you I was the chairman. The uh, so I was a board member of Friends of Fair Park. Right. Yeah. So the board voted to support that plan, and I, as the chair, I, I supported the board's decision. But I didn't vote for any. I mean, but I didn't have a vote on any type of, not, a, you not like being a park board member. Okay, gotcha. But you you followed up with that explanation by saying that there were some infrastructure issues that not, that were not being managed properly by the city of Dallas. No, I, I didn't. I said that us as a city we've neglected Fair Park. I didn't mean to say that the board or anything. I think we as a city have neglected Fair Park. Do we've neglected think, a whole lot of other things too. And hopefully this bond election will remedy some of that. That that's fantastic. But uh, I, I'm kind of interested in Fair Park right okay. now. Do you think that there are infrastructure issues with Fair Park that cannot be managed by the city and should be managed by a private entity? No, um, I think that there's there's two, I see Fair Park in two different things, right? The physical buildings and fixing up the buildings yeah. and then running the day-to-day -day of the park, attracting events, uh, taking care of uh, the public, getting people there. Um, I think the city can fix up the buildings if they have the proper money. Uh, I don't think the city's too good at marketing the park and planning events there and doing the things that really need to be done. Um, that's why I don't necessarily agree with, it's just a management contract. They would be managing the park. Uh, similar to what we do with Clyde Warren Park, the Arboreta, the zoo. Um, we enter into these agreements all the time. That's a fair statement, but the next question, the logical next question would be, do you think that that agreement has worked for the city? And for the neighborhood at large, with an agreement like that, with State Fair in Texas. Okay. Break it down for me. It has the agreement between the city and the State Fair of Texas um, overall benefit, benefited the neighborhood surrounding the State Fair and the city at large, and the infrastructure in State Fair. It would make sense to me that the contract with State Fair the lease, whatever you yeah. want to call it. It would make sense to me if there was an agreement there that if they're making so much money, which they appear to be making quite a bit of money off of that land, one month out of the year, it would make sense to me if they contributed to the overall infrastructure management. So I think we could sit here and debate that all night. I think that both sides have benefited from that contract, and there are times when both sides have not. Um, I think that I don't, I'm not going to sit up here and defend them. They're plenty. They're they can defend themselves. Uh, so I think that the city. I mean, right now that's the only thing happening there. If if you we have want more influence over them than I do, so this is why I'm asking you those questions. Okay. Because I can't vote them out. Uh, Neither can I. But I, I have more influence over the parks board than I do over the state for and even that is pretty. It, it, very small amount of influence. Yeah. So my questions go to the people that work out deals with them. Uh, okay. Therefore, my questions go to you. Fire, shoot me a question. What? I already, I already asked. So the, the surrounding neighborhood, I think, 
is a complex issue. And like I said, I think we could spend all night talking about it. But I think both sides, not, I'm not talking about the surrounding neighborhood, I'm talking about the state fair and the city. I think both sides have benefited at times. I think there are times where both sides could have done a better job. There's no, here, here's, let's go higher up, right? Let's go from 10,000 feet to 30,000 feet. There's no silver bullet, right? Like we're, we're looking at all these things in Dallas and we're like, all right, well, let's just kick them out and everything will be great at Fair Park. Or let's just take down these statues and everything will be great. Or let's, let's just do this. And we're, we're taking really complex issues and in my opinion, we're boiling them down to either a tweet or a soundbite, in a sense to make ourselves feel better, but in another sense to think that that's just the world is black and white. The surrounding neighborhood uh, around the South Dallas Fair Park neighborhood, I know it fairly well. I've worked there. Uh, I owned property there for a little bit, and then I couldn't, I couldn't handle the crime around the property anymore, so I sold it. But the, the, it's a multifaceted problem, right? There's, there's educational issues, there's poverty issues. So to say that this park is going to solve South Dallas's problems, I think is both misleading and it's negligent. And so, to, wait, 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 let to me finish. bring my questions into that is, is to twist my words. I, I never, I'm talking about- No, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about 30,000 foot level, right? Okay. So we as a city, we've said yeah, that. that's we've, your answer to my question. Okay, so what's your question on the infrastructure? Is there a better deal to be made with the state for Texas, with the management group that runs the state for Texas in one month out of the year? Is there a better deal to be made to manage that park and manage the infrastructure and for them to spend more money on the infrastructure for that park so that that then benefits the park and the surrounding neighborhood throughout the rest of the year? So we, we have done that in a sense. We've now laid out, the city auditor released an audit and said by next year you need to have these protections in place. We've done that in a sense. Is there a better way to do it? Probably, maybe. Um, but is that, I mean, it's like a landlord telling a tenant that you're in here one month out of 12, but you gotta take care of all of it for 12 months. So I don't know that that is the answer. I, there's probably a balance, but it's I think- different. But we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that. But I think that the privatization of the management of the park hopefully will hash some of that out. I mean, the park board could spend every meeting for the next 12 months dealing with Fair Park, and we would probably only get, what, you guys did it, right? A year? How long did you guys spend, a year and a half? Yeah, so a year and a half on one park out of a system that is thousands of acres, $100 million budget, 1,200 employees, so yeah, we could, uh, obviously everything could be better when you're, we've only got one thing to focus on, but I'm hoping that whatever process is in place will will put better controls in place. And if it doesn't, then it's back on us. Yes, ma'am. I was wondering, well, first of all, I think that you're really doing a great job with answering these questions, and I feel like you're really in a hot seat. But it, these lights are hot, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, turn the mountain, get some LEDs or something. <laughs> it seems like it's bad for the environment. Uh, Thank you much for taxes. I can't <laughs> <laughs> wear your, wear your uh, solar glasses. I drove all around town trying to find this today and I couldn't find any. My question is about the bond issue itself. Sure. And so I'm probably very uninformed about a lot of this. I'm very new to Texas. Well, very new. I keep saying that for three years. But and I very much love Fair Park. I've spent my first three, my first three anniversaries there, and um, and I think it's a lifelong thing. Like I think that no matter where I live from now on, I'm coming back to the state fair of Texas to celebrate my wedding anniversary. And so, um, so I have a personal stake in what you do there. And so, but my question is about voting. My question is about this bond issue. So, how does the city or the park board whose responsibility? Is it going to be to get people to vote? Because in November, no one's going to vote. There's no one running for anything else, right? There's going to be nothing else but this bond issue. So like 15 people get to decide, and like me and five of my friends get to flip the whole thing. Like I kind of want to flip it, and if regardless, whichever way, even if it's the bad way, just to prove my point that there's not enough people voting. Uh, I absolutely agree with you, and that's really 
a big reason why I'm up here. Um, Mark said at the beginning that I mean, we all know each other. We could have done this on a group. A lot, a lot, a lot of us know each other, and we could have done this over a group text. And a lot of us disagree on things and issues. And part of the reason I did this, and Mark and I were talking about it, is that regardless of that, the fact that you guys are here to listen to me shows. I mean, look, I am no headliner. Uh, shows me that you care enough about the city and care about this stuff so I should come and I should talk to y'all and and this is what it's gonna take to pass the bond um, as much as it you're right if you if we probably break down the number of dollars spent and the number of voters each vote is gonna control a crazy amount of money it happens with DISD elections every time so my, my answer to your question is a plan is being, being put in place right now to organize folks to get this bond passed and hopefully you'll be there with us coming to these types of meetings. Robert Kent is over there. He's the head of the Trust for Public Land in Dallas and he has been working day and night on this thing for years. So there is there is something in place but we need you to tell your 15 friends and we need your 15 friends to tell 15 of their friends and so forth and so forth and, and that's how these races work. Um, unfortunately we have low voter, voter turnout. Or the trains, we or, don't. Uh, you know, on the flash of things that were so, so public money won't be spent to pass the bond. There will be private money spent, and guys like Robert are talking to people who support parks to get that message out there. But it's going to be on us. It's going to be on majority volunteers to do that. And as unfortunately, that's that's the way. That's the nature of the beast. So. You are, like you said, one of 15, a powerful person in this, and make sure everyone knows that it's important. I mean, it's, it, that's just it. I mean, letters to the editor, writing <laughs> op-eds, calling your friends, getting them out to vote. And I'm not wrong, right? It's gonna be one issue. It's gonna be one bond issue. It's gonna be. You have to employ all those voter registration people in every single precinct yeah. to be there all day, five of them, in every single precinct regardless that 12 or 13 people may or may not walk in the door. It's gonna be 10 propositions, and from what I understand, there's gonna be like constitutional amendments for the state, but nothing glamorous. I mean, the most glamorous thing on the on the ballot will be the bond. We'll get there. If you if you have that much passion to get people to vote, we'll get there. Um, she does. It, really, the, the Trust for Public Land's done some polling, and I think parks have about an 80% favorability rating uh, in terms of the bond issuance. Daniel, go ahead. How do you, how do you uh, get a neighborhood like Buckman Terrace that has got the three highest voting precincts in the district and gets nothing on the bond for our park that's 50 years old that's never been finished, and we're supposed to be thankful that we get 23 trees and a $110,000 walking tree. Yeah. How um, are we supposed to vote for that? No, I get, I got you. Um, it's the way the individual council districts were divvied up uh, has changed over the last six weeks, and I, I, I wasn't aware what the district seven allocations were, but it sounds like. I think they're putting, and it's actually not from current council; it was from previous council. One hundred fifty thousand dollars for exercise equipment, but the seniors can't even walk on the trail because we don't have benches. Uh, I think those numbers have actually changed. Um, I know the new incoming council member changed the entire D7 allotment. So if you want, I'll send you an updated breakdown. Um, but I agree, I mean, it, it's gonna be important. We're gonna count on you to get Buckner Terrace to vote. I mean, if we don't get it, we won't support it. No, I got you. I mean, we got 5,000 people on our list. Go ahead, Robert. Hey, Bobby, uh, we talked a lot about kind of details tonight, which is really good. I'm wondering, if you make a cast vision for the positive goals, the parks you play for Dallas, either the way that Fair Park would be a positive driver for the Fair Park South Dallas neighborhood, or parks in general across the city, and what you hope to see maybe at the end of your term have happened within our city because of parks? Um, that's a good question. So, <clears throat> parks in general, I've been saying this for the last six months, parks have the highest ROI in terms of dollars that we put in versus benefit we get back, whether it's health benefits, tax increases, uh, quality of life issues. So in in my opinion, Dallas has really finally figured out the formula, so like whether it's the Katy Trail, the Santa Fe Trail, 
Titsi Park, Kid Springs Park. We, we finally figured out that if we promote green spaces, we promote these places where we can interact, and they don't have to all be bars and restaurants. If we promote public space, then everything kind of works itself out. So the housing stock around Titsi is filling back up. The housing stock around Kid Springs is filling back up. Now, our next stage to that is we figured out that single family model is, I think, downtown. Um, a lot of people have this notion that downtown parks are for homeless people and people who eat lunch, uh, but I think that you have a vibrant, vibrant community in downtown that's coming back to live in downtown, and those parks are gonna serve as your green space, your outlet, your kind of good for the soul. So in my vision, our trails and our green space are much better off than they are today, and with that comes positive development, positive outcomes, and with the positive development comes better schools. I mean, I think if you go to any other country, whether it's you go to like Brazil, go to Rio, and you see how trails kind of fit through the fabric of the people. You go to Kyoto and you look at the river and how they engage with that and the natural environment, you'll see it in the people. And you'll see it in New York, Central Park, or San Francisco. We don't have that yet in Dallas. We kind of saw a glimpse of, glimpse of it with Clyde Warren. I mean, the, one of my best memories is watching a World Cup match in Clyde Warren Park, and I was like, wow, we can actually have things like this in Dallas. So that that's my, I want 10 Clyde Warrens. I want 50 TT Parks. I want, I, want, I want them throughout town, throughout parts of town that have been neglected and haven't been kind of given that type of uh, amenity before. So a follow-up question to that, which you might have an answer to. In my mind, one of the biggest challenges is that we underfund parks in the city and our general spending every year. We spend uh, far less than our peer city and our park system per resident. On a per resident basis, Plano spends twice as much as Dallas does on a per resident basis. You know, the downtown parks are great, five wards great, they're all funded by private dollars. If you want to reach this future where we have 55 warrants and 50 TTC parks, et cetera, what is the mix between private and public spending? Do you see a future where we're going to be spending more money in the general spending in parks and towns? I mean, I'll, I'll probably get ahead of myself on this, but I've always liked Chicago's model where they have a separate property tax line item for parks. Um, that's pie in the sky thinking, but I think that we have to take the parks annual budget out of the general budgets. Uh, control because it's the first thing to get cut so um, we can ask the city manager's office for more money every year or we could ask the voters um, that's pie in the sky and I'm about to melt so I don't know how long you want me up here well we've been going for about an hour we can uh... <clears throat> seriously these lights are hot I'll take over I'll, I'm gonna stick around so if you guys want to stick around I'll talk to anyone I have one more question before you leave yeah <laughs> And y'all both left. Right. Just, just because. See, that's what I get for being polite. There you go. Just because you keep reiterating the importance of the bond, and I, I'm not disagreeing there. However, the specific proposition for Fair Park, um, I'm not a fan of at all. Um, and I know a lot of people in my district are not a fan of. Yeah. Um, with the amount of time that it takes for bonds to to begin being released, with the amount of deferred maintenance that's not being addressed with this bond with the uncertainty of who's going to be managing the park, how could you possibly, with a good conscience, sell this to people? And I'm asking you that because I want the proposition for parks. And you're saying that, you're, that the, the whole outcome, especially with Fair Park, is to be for the people. I don't understand what is, how is it any good for us? Sell so, it to me. Okay, so the 50 million for Fair Park, it's literally health and safety. It's uh, buildings are falling apart. And so, if we do nothing, there'll be nothing left to save. But answer the question, how, how soon can we use any of those, those monies towards- The city manager's office has said all the bonds for this issuance will be done in five years. So, exactly. Yeah, so so what, what on top of that will be needed to even, to even address what y'all have on this list? I'm, I'm confused. Five that. years down the road, you're not, you don't think that there's gonna be more of a problem? If we fund it properly, then no, but yeah. With I, only 20% of what's been identified. The, there's different priorities, right? So the big number is the big number. Some of those are wants versus needs. I think right now this will get us where we need to be that if we, and it's not gonna be easy, we're not gonna just spend this and be done with it. It's just a multi-step process and we have to do this. If we don't do this, do we, no one's gonna come. We need to do those things right now and spend money on those things right now for health and safety and basic infrastructure issues because the state fair of Texas has not 
fulfill its obligations. No. We need to do it because the Dallas Historical Society is sitting in the Hall of State and they're trying to maintain all the city's records and they're dealing with... Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. So, so, first of all, the Hall of State needs to be repaired. It's holding our city's most historic documents and it's flooding every time it rains. So that's what we're spending on. I don't think any of this money... If, if the State Fair wanted, if they had a need or a want, they would have spent the money themselves. This is for stuff that, honestly, Fair Park needs. And it's easy. It, it, I get they it. They don't have a need or want for that because they got a fucking car for it to show off cars. Well, the thing is, uh, is that they this this park has done so much negative the to the surrounding neighborhoods. I will hang out with you guys and talk one on one. I'm gonna hand the mic back to Mark. Thanks, Brad. All right, all right. Well, thanks for coming out, everybody. I think that I I think that went rather well. So I'm. Uh oh, be careful, Steve. So, anyway, thanks for coming out. I think these are important conversations to have. We don't all agree on everything. We knew that before we got here. We uh, now know that now that we're gone. Here, here, here's the deal, guys. These are really complicated issues, and we got to talk about them, and we got to have Mark Wood and Steve and Larry and everybody else grill and everybody. This is a healthy, democratic process. If no one has ever called to account for what the decisions are, it's really easy just to scoot on down the road, right? But I hope you at least give Bobby a little bit of uh, appreciation for coming out here and taking a lot of shots from you guys. All right? And I'll tell you, just from my own personal experience, not every debate ends in a win on the end of the debate. Sometimes you have a debate, you fight it out, neither side feels like they made any progress, and then a week later you come back after you've cooled off and you say, ah, that did make sense. So don't lose heart, we have these things, we go back and forth, we fight each other, that's just the nature of the beast. But if we don't have the conversations because we're just calling each other assholes on Facebook all the time, we're not gonna make any progress at all. That's not productive. We just can't do it. I will give each of you one pass a week to call me an asshole. And I'll forgive it, and I'll be fine. You know I love it. Thanks for hosting, man. Hey, thanks for coming out, guys. And, and perhaps on the State Fair of Texas, maybe we can put together a little uh, citizens committee. I'd be happy to sit on that. And maybe we can take a look at this a little bit closer. You're, you're damn right I would. And we can look at these issues. They're fair questions. We should look at it. We should tell the State Fair to get their shit out of the midway for the whole part of the year that they're not operating the fair, right? It's hard to host events when all their stuff is used for storage right in the middle of the park. That's, that's, not, that's not a fair thing for Fair Park. And the answer is we can always do better. But I do want to point out one thing Bobby said that I think is relevant to some of your points. The comment that he made that I found most relevant was he said, we've got a park board that has a whole lot of acreage to manage. They've got a huge budget. They've got 1,200 employees. There's all kinds of things going on in the city. And that if they had time to focus all the resources on one thing, sure, they could spend a lot more time managing these little minute details. That, my friends, is exactly why you need to give some of these parks over to independent organizations, that that's all they do. They have 12 months a year to focus on that one thing and make sure that's done right. And Mark Wooden, maybe you can be on that committee to make sure that it's done right. This doesn't have to just be our people or your people. This is our city. Whether we agree or not, we should work on this stuff together. But it's going to take somebody spending some time to actually do the legwork. And you can't just sit up here and throw bullets at people that are already volunteering while they're still trying to make a living and raise their families and do everything else. They're not getting paid for this. So stop bitching and step up and do something. I'm not getting paid for that. <laughs> That's why I'm gonna buy your drink tonight because I feel bad for you not getting paid. All right, anyway, I'm gonna end this. Guys, we're all hanging out here. Let's have some drinks, we'll have some fun. We're still all friends at the end of this thing, or at least we should be, and we'll keep the conversation going. Thanks for coming out. Oh. Lauren. Yes. I was trying to get a check.